Welcome to this Wired That Way video cast, where we explore the unique personalities of biblical characters and how we can apply that information to our lives today. My name is Rich Meese, and along with my wife, Barbara, we serve as Directors of Leadership Development for Lead Like Jesus. And today we're privileged to interview Ken Vogus, the author of the Biblical Disc Profile. Ken has used this information in his own consulting business for over 35 years and has also taught it at Dallas Theological Seminary for the last 20 years. Ken, delighted to have you with us today. Great to be here with you as always. Just, just looking forward to our time together. Thank you. The DISC model is a powerful personality assessment that's been used by literally millions of people around the world to learn about their strengths and weaknesses and how that applies to their everyday behavior. Of course, you probably know DISC stands for Dominance, Influencing, Steadiness, and Conscientious. And this biblical DISC is used to help people understand how God wired them and how to use that information to glorify God in their lives. So today, we're going to be looking at the behavioral style of Moses. Moses is a character from the Old Testament whom we remember as the man who led the Israelites out of bondage in Egypt. So Moses had a blend of both the conscientious and steadiness style with a little bit of dominance thrown in there too. So Ken, share with us a little bit about what made Moses such a great example of this blend of behavioral styles. Well, I'll go ahead and get into it, but I'd like to go ahead and, and, and put up the, the graph itself so you can really see uh, the, the position of where that is. He's a very, very high C person. But the other per thing that's important to understand is that his eye continuum was extremely low, and they're both blue in color. So that means that he was not just a C, he was a double C. He was very, very much into that. What that looks like as far as, as traits are concerned is that he, he was very, very, very much concerned with making sure that the standards are maintained. And what's interesting about that, of course, we, you know, he, he, he talked to the first generation, and then, and then he also went ahead and retold the law to the second generation which is Deuteronomy. So that maintaining of standards is one of those characteristics that was there. Also, he has a very strong sense of quality control. We had a of Exodus 32, and uh, there was a thing where they made a golden calf, and um, God's not real crazy about sharing the stage, and, and asked Moses to go down and take that care of that, and he, <laughs> he did a very good job. Attention to detail, this is one of the gifts that they have, and we have the the, the book of uh, Leviticus, which is recording the laws and the priest duties, and it's very, very detailed in, in how that looks, and uh, very, very meticulous as far as, and conscientious. Now, he only spent 40 years in the desert with these people, and uh, they were they were not really nice people sometimes. Mm -hmm. They would complain, and he just hung in there and did that very well. Very well. And he followed, followed letters, uh, you know, instructions to the letters, you know, the tabernacle plan. We have that information on what God got in and, and, and that information, too. And so it's very, very detailed. So you're, you're talking about a person that's very detailed. The, the, the big tick off, pick, uh, tip off to who he was, though, is that high C's have a gift to ask questions. And, <laughs> and, and particularly when you, when you give him something that... Uh, um, is as kind of a surprise. He'll ask a lot of questions, and and then there'll be a follow-up question, and then there'll be a follow-up question, and and we'll we'll go ahead and get to that. So, Ken, you've given us a lot of scriptural references already. What are some places where we see that high conscientiousness behavior in scripture? It's it's a good question, and uh, what what you what you look at is he wrote the first five books of the Bible. And what really impresses me from a behavioral standpoint is the book of Genesis. And what you have in the book of Genesis, a lot of detailed conversation. And that, for, that happened 400 years ago before he you know, wrote it down. So somebody had to dictate it. And that person was God. And what's so am amazing about it, I was able to go ahead and profile uh, characters in the book of Genesis based on how he wrote that down. 
And those, those behavioral traits are phenomenal in their accuracy. That is amazing what he did. He also communicated in detail God's commandment and laws to the Hebrew nation. It's, a, it's something he was very, very concerned. That's very high C. But the, the thing that probably um, influences me more than or, or uh, makes the greatest impression on me with regard to him is uh, his willingness to go ahead and during this golden calf thing, uh, he realized how serious that was. And he had to go talk to, to the Lord about it. The Lord actually uh, made him an offer to start all over. I mean, he, he was willing to go ahead and do that. And Moses said, no, no, I'll go ahead and straighten it out. And then he found out how bad it was. So what, what, what is important for him, he, somebody had to go back up and talk about, okay, Lord, where are you on this? And he went back up on, on the mountain and talked to the Lord about it. And he, had, he didn't know what to do other than to give his life for the people. And that's what he did. So Barbara, I'd like you to go ahead and read that. It's very, very important that we get this on, on, on the, on the uh, tape as to what he did as far as willingness to give up his life. Okay, so let's look at that in Exodus. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, Oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made for themselves gods of gold. But now, please forgive their sin. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. The Lord replied to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I spoke of. That's pretty awesome, wasn't it? And uh, God said, um, not now, that'll come later. Yeah. Of course, it did in Christ. But that is, that, that is one of the characteristics. Once a high C buys in, they'll go the distance. Yeah. And he was willing to go ahead and give his life. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Is that uh, typic that, so that's typical for high C behavior? that kind of loyalty when, when they bought into a plan. Yeah. And, and there's, there's, a, there's a high S side too. And I'd like to go ahead and talk about that if, if I could. There's not just C, but there's also S. And I, I, the S comes into this thing is how patient he was and tactful he was with Pharaoh. In fact, in one particular day, in one of the plagues, it says, you decide when we're going to lift this. So, that, you know, that, 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 that was quite interesting, that he, how patient and tactful he was. Uh, yeah, the other thing with regard to the, as he spent 40 years in the desert, patiently leading a bunch of, and the Lord talked stiff-necked people. <laughs> <laughs> they were very ungrateful, and they, they hated manna burgers. You know, they were tired of manna burgers. <laughs> <laughs> and they complained about him, and, and and he just hung in there, and he hung in there, he hung in there. I think that the the uh, the the thing that is really amazing, which you alluded to, uh, Rich, was that the, he was incredibly loyal, very steady, and and very faithful to carrying out the in you know, the Lord's plan for the Hebrew nation. I mean, I mean, think about it. You know, spending forty years with a bunch of complaining people that shows a little patience, doesn't it? Sure does. I'd like you to go ahead and read that. And this, this is very important. The reason I chose this, Rich, uh, this passage is God's impression of Moses. The, the, he has given him an, uh, a, 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 how he felt about who Moses was in his leadership. So if you'd, you'd read that passage in, in Deuteronomy, this, of course, Deuteronomy is the end of, of, of Moses' life. And this is, this is kind of the epitaph for, for, for Moses based on what, how, what uh, God thought about it. Since then, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face, who did all those miraculous signs and wonders the Lord sent him to do in Egypt, to Pharaoh and to all his officials and to his whole land. For no one has ever shown the mighty power or performed the awesome deed that Moses did in the sight of all Israel. That's a pretty good epitaph, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So Ken, tell us a little bit, is there an actual downside to this behavioral style that Moses um, has? Your question is, is there a downside? <laughs> <laughs> there always is. With, with every style, there's a downside. There's a downside. We're wired a certain way, and we have, when we, we have a, a need that's not met, fear showed up. And high C's are not crazy about surprises. 
especially when involved with high risk. And think about Moses. Now, what, what, where, where was he? He left Egypt because he, he, he murdered a man. And so he was a wanted man. Mm. And, and uh, so that was, a, that was a concern for him. And if, if you ask him a, 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 a question in that particular area where there's a surprise and a risk involved, there may be a problem. And this is what the Lord asked him to do. The Lord said, now go back to Egypt and bring my people out of, out of Egypt. See, so he's, the Lord is asking him, go back there where he's a wanted man. Now, is that a, weird, is that a risk? I think so. I think so. So you can expect some degree of questions. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and have, have you go through these series of questions. Now, Barbara, I'm going to have you play Moses, okay? Okay. That you can play God, okay? Okay. <laughs> but but what, what we're going to do is we're going to go through these questions. And they're absolutely uh, uh, typical of what would happen when a surprise occurs. So um, where we are right now, is uh, Barbara, you're on. You're asking the first question, okay? But Moses said to God, who am I? And God said, I will be with you. Then Moses said to God, what name shall I say sent me? God said, I am who I am. Then Moses answered, what if they will not believe me? And he gave him three signs. Moses' staff his leprous hand, and water to blood. Then Moses said to the Lord, Please, Lord, I am slow of speech. The Lord said to him, I will be with your mouth and teach you what to say. But he said, Please, Lord, send the message by whomever thou wilt. So here you've got God presenting a plan, and Moses' answer was, Do me a favor send somebody else <laughs> you get it now now what what you have in here and i'm all, I'll, barbara i'm talking to you now because you, you got a little little c right little c okay now i'm just going to critique god here okay and, and to give you some insights of what i see him answering him he, he he gave him very specific and accurate information and he mixed a, a information the data with assurances i'm gonna be with you and then he provided him reassurances and support, right? And all three of those are important to seize in getting you to go ahead and buy in. But the problem is it didn't work. And this is why, why, it's, why it's so important to go ahead and say, why didn't it work? Because it wasn't complete. Now, there was something missing. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and put up uh, the, the information on called the three R's. And there's actually, I gave you only three, Barbara, but there are actually nine. And there's two of them that are missing. And I wanna talk about that. So is it so critical to understand that? One is the need for process time. When, you, when you're talking about something new, you haven't seen before, you've never seen this before, and they want you to go ahead and totally embrace it. And you have all your questions and you get your questions answered, but you're still not sure, right? <laughs> so you need some time to think about this thing. Barbara understands that. <laughs> Do you understand that? You understand what totally, I'm talking about? Totally. You understand. Can. You need some time to process. See? And this is that immediate conversation. And boy, you know, I'm not sure about this. And then the, the, the next one was very important. The ability to go ahead and after you process to talk to somebody else about it and have that 30 third person validation. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and show on the screen. You don't have it, but we'll, we'll, we'll import it on here and what that looks like. There is, and, and I did this with, with, with a pastor. He didn't understand it because he's married to a high C. And I said, you always, you always have to go ahead and deal with conversation with a high C with a triangle. And you're, you're here, and they're here, and you're providing information here. And they're listening to you and asking all these questions. And then you ask them going, oh, I've answered every question you could come up with. Are you ready to move forward? The answer is no, <laughs> no, because you haven't had that process time. And what, what is important is to go ahead and allow them process time and permission to talk to a third party and to go ahead and go through that. And what, if they get validation from that, they can take over. And that's exactly what happened, is that Moses had, he had some process time. Then he went ahead and talked to who? His father-in-law, Jethro. 
and I'll read the scriptures. And then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, let me, ret let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. And guess what? Jethro said, go and I wish you well. That's all the information that was there. But as a result of that affirmation, then he was able to go ahead and go. And then after that, God was also able to go ahead and give him additional information. Oh, by the way, all the people that are looking to kill you, they're all dead. So don't worry about it, you know, and I'll be with you. And of course, then he met Aaron. That was another validation where Aaron met him. And then they went ahead and went, went, went through that process of taking the people and getting them out of, out of, out of Egypt, okay? I want to just talk a little bit more about the, the, this, this, what we call 20th century behavioral science that talks about how good you sees are. I'm talking, it's an affirmation for you, Barbara. <laughs> okay. I want to read it for you. And, and then you tell me, Rich can critique, critique this. Okay. <laughs> it says, the giftedness of high seas, they tend to be very concerned about maintaining standards with a strong sense of quality control. They also are very, very much into attention to detail. And they're meticulous and conscientious about what they do. And they tend to record and follow instructions to the exact letter given to them by their superiors. If they get it and they trust that, they'll, you can bet on them going ahead and doing it. Now, what I'm going to do is go ahead and read the scripture about Moses. This is when Moses, and this is in Exodus 24, and this has to do with the giving of the Ten Commandments. This is when Moses went and told the people all the Lord's words and laws, they responded with one voice. Everything the Lord has said, they will do. Of course, they didn't, but we know that. But then Moses said, then he wrote down everything the Lord said. <laughs> now, I told you, but I'm writing it down. <laughs> so that, that is who they did. And there is that, that, that follow through. Now, what I, what I also want to go ahead and just show you uh, is that what I went through as far as making sure that I understand who Moses is, and we have 30 pages of empirical data that had nothing to do with the scripture, has to do with the describing of this behavior uh, style, in which I think is Moses. And then what I've included is all the scripture references in those nine components where you can do your own Bible study on that character. And you can, you can find that in, an, in, in the biblical desk or, or, or a lot of the other, if you want to go ahead and do your study. So that's, that's Moses, okay? And if I might, just from a practical standpoint, uh, being married to a high C, I call Barbara my checker checker. <clears throat> but I wanted to validate what you said about giving permission to go to a third party. Mm -hmm. I've been married for Bar to Barbara for many years, and I know a lot of this disc information but it wasn't until you specifically pointed out the importance of that, that I really got the, why when I might say, well, let's do this. And she'll say, well, I think I'll call my sister. And I used to get upset about that as if, don't you trust me? And what I began to realize, it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with her need. Or her need. And, 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 and that's what's so beautiful about our heavenly father, of course, is he understands that and, did that for Moses uh, by allowing him to validate through Jethro. And, and, he, and he did it again for Mary, the mother of Jesus, in yeah. sending Gabriel and, and, and allowing Elizabeth to be pregnant. Yeah. You know, that, that detail is amazing. When you understand behavior and you understand that model and how they think, how personal God is, it is, it is, it is just amazing. Yeah. You know, Ken, this information is so valuable for those who are watching this and have that high conscientious style, how validating it is for them and how important it is for those people who interact with them to have this information. But one of the things that I'm really curious about is how, how do we know when a high C begins to be more spirit filled when they're really at that point? How do we know that? How do we see that? I think the, 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 where you look for is when they, uh, their trust, it takes a long time to build a trust. But once the trust is there, you know, they, they don't ask that many questions anymore. When, when, you, when you see that, there, and I, I feel that at the end of Exodus, at the beginning of Exodus where Moses shows up, you know, he has all these questions. The end of Exodus is incredible in that this is the, this is the instructions of building the tabernacle. And there's instructions there, but there's no questions. Hmm. All it says 
and Moses did all the Lord commanded. That's how you know is when that when that trust is there, and then they go and follow through. I think that's the measurement of knowing when they're being spiritual. spiritual. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I think it says that over and over. And Moses did as the Lord commanded, and Moses did as the Lord commanded. Yeah, which is it, it's really there crazy. probably about ten times. Yeah, he just did it according to the Lord commanded. That's what's in there. And to me, that's a very, very powerful, powerful testimony of yeah. the maturity of Moses. Well, let's wrap this up, Ken. What are some final thoughts about this behavioral style? Well, I'm talking about strategies of dealing with modern day seas, okay? And I'm going right. to go ahead and do this, and I'll allow Barbara to critique what I'm saying. <laughs> I will. I, and I know you will. <laughs> 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 what, what, what is anticipate they need to ask many questions you give them permission I understand you need to understand it logically and I think also that that the tone is important it's a non-threatening and, and 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 answering the question why why we need this change to be they've got mm -hmm. they've got to go ahead and, and do that and then patiently answer the questions as specifically as possible with reassurances yeah. now I'm not asking you to walk the plank I'm walking with you okay and anytime you think I'm not there just tell me and I'll be there you know? and allow time to validate your answers by the third party it, it, the most loving thing rich you can do is give her permission give <laughs> give Barbara permission to go and talk to her sister <laughs> and it's not about it's not about rejection it isn't yeah. it's yeah. about all it's all about validation yeah and then give reassurances of available to follow up questions. In other words, it's very common that you'll ask, the C will ask a question, get the answer, you answer the question, they'll go away, and then they'll come back and ask the same question. Yeah. Now, why are they doing it? They want to be 100% sure they heard the answer. They're only 99% sure. <laughs> That's right, Kim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they make, and so they'll ask you. So be patient with the fact that they answered the same question again. So I think those are, if I could say, those are the five principles you can say with how to deal and love high seas. That's my answer. How'd I do, Barbara? You know, Ken, that's so huge. When people, especially in a marital relationship, when they understand that about each other, that if a spouse is asking a lot of questions, it has nothing to do with them doubting them or uh, having not having trust in them. It's all about just meeting our own needs. And, yeah. and, and to the, probably the most important thing that we've done in this session is is uh, your uh, your summary, and and it's and it's coming from somebody that understands these because you are one. Yeah. And that's the value of this information. It's so practical when we can apply it to our own lives. Well, thank you for joining us for this webcast. We trust that you've gained some insights into this particular behavioral style. For further information, you might enjoy going to YouTube and exploring some of our uh, videos there, as well as explore our Leadership Academy. Thank you very much.